Hi friend, how are you? I'm Pat Sloan and this is my daily video on Tuesday, August 25th, towards the end of the month. Uh, how are you today? I hope you're doing really, really well. We have our topic of the day and I've got uh, some updates, I've got a little cross stitch chat today and a question, the last question from Lisa. <laughs> I hope you're watching these, Lisa. Okay. Our topic for the day, which by the way, if you are on the Facebook group and you aren't watching all the videos, you'll see that photos will be shared where you'll see a lot of photos, like a lot of purple quilts. Um, that's because it's the topic of the day. It's also on our calendar. So if you've never downloaded the calendar, the link is below, it's always below the video. So you can go get the calendar. Okay, topic of the day, odd shaped stuff. That stuff that you, what do we do with odd shaped tools that we use uh, for, our, for our craft? So what I'd like you to do, your assignment today is go look around your space, look around your storage area, and find those odd shaped things that may not be in the best spot. This happens to me all the time. I might get a piece out, get, get, get a tool out, get something out, work with it, and then I don't, I sort of put it back close to me in my space, which is always not, and then it just stays there. You know, like I thought, oh, I, I may even think to myself, I'll put it, you know, back wherever it came from. And that doesn't happen. It ends up getting this new home, which often is not very efficient. It's not efficient to store things close to you that you rarely use. They're taking up valuable space in your environment, um, in your in your you know your working area. You don't want your little used items, which often those odd shaped things are little used. I mean, you might have like a um, some sort of a special big ruler for strip cutting or something like that, but maybe you don't use it very often but you get it out once, you know, every couple months and do a project. Well, then you need to put it back where it came from. Uh, like for my tiara, I have a bobbin winder just for the tiara, which is a bulk. It's weird. It's like a rectangle with a long thing for the thread to go through, you know, a tension wire and it's bulky, but I don't keep it out here next to the tiara. It's over in the closet. Um, but if I were to bind some bobbins and does not put it back, then it would just be sitting here taking up space uh, that's not being used. So that's your assignment. Find, and, and tell me about your odd shaped things that you find. You know, just I think we need that that moment every so often to just look around and go, oh, I've got this big roll of batting, and I am not actually quilting my own quilts right now. I'm sending them all out. Why do I have this big roll of batting sitting right next to my table? to have to walk around and take up room. Those are the kind of things. Move it somewhere else, which is not going to be in your primary work area. Okay, there you go. <laughs> so let's do our cross stitch talk first. This is the, today our monthly, the primitive cross stitch. Here is the cross stitch of the month. It is called Joy and Contentment. Isn't that beautiful? Here's the pattern. So that is what the patterns look like. There are uh, 12 of them. We're doing one a month and you can put them all into one sampler. You might be stitching them on smaller. This is stitched on 14 and Cindy is stitching for me right now until I can stitch again. I can't stitch right now. I mean, I can, I can do a little bit, but the problem is my hands wear out. So it's either stitching or quilting. I can only do so much each day because then all the muscles and everything just ache and I can't, I can't do it anymore. So anyway, this is just so cute. I love that it's called joy and contentment. Those are strawberries in the basket. Now let me show you what I am doing with these. And pretty soon I think I can go ahead and start finishing these up because I'm going to make them little mini quilts. And I have um, this little uh, Ackfeld hanger. And so this is a little over wide because I'm going to do just this one because I had Cindy stitch the little fancy lacy border around it. I'll probably just bind it, like just make this like a, you know, little, what is it going to be like a six and a half inch square or seven inch square and bind it. But for the rest of them, we're not going to do the little lacy border because that's like very time consuming. Uh, <laughs> And I think we still get the same gorgeous effect without it. So this is what I'm going to do. I have this gorgeous uh, layer cake 
that I used in a project recently, but the colors are just perfect for what we're doing. And so I am going to use it as a, as a tiny little border around each one, and then maybe a little binding. So let's see here, like if I did this, I just do a little mock up and fold it. There we go. So I could do with just this coral, which kind of mimics the, uh, the, the frame that they put it in, doesn't it? Oops, be upside down, you would wanna see it. Okay, so what if I did it like this? This is what I'm thinking. I'm just gonna mock it up to see, have a little border and then a uh, binding. So not, not a whole lot around it like that. And I think that would be really pretty. I'll show you here, whoops, there we go. So that's what I'm thinking to do, is just using this particular layer cake, I'll, I'll link you up to it, it's called Gypsy Soul. Like for this one over here, I won't put a, I'll just do a little binding, I might do, because that one was called Patriotism, here I'll pull it over here. This one's called Patriotism and um, Industry. So I think I'm gonna take this blue and just do pull the because I'll pull the blue like from in those colors in the flag. So I think that'll be just the binding on that one. Now I did get this other super cool tool that I have to show you. Oh my gosh, I can't wait to try these. These are cross stitch line keepers. Are any of you using these yet? Let me know. They're magnets so that I can put them on to you know, the top and the bottom on the piece of paper and keep track because I'm a baby cross stitcher. I lose track of where I am very easily. So I'm super excited about these. These are also here, let me pull this up here now. These are also the thing, I don't know if you remember, like maybe about five or six days ago, maybe a week ago, I couldn't find something. Like I had seen these and I couldn't find them. I didn't know where I put them because right now my area is such a mess. I just have piles everywhere. And so I finally found them. I was like, they could not have left the house. They're in the house somewhere. <laughs> they're in one of two rooms even. I know they're in these two rooms. So I finally found it. I can't wait to try those. Okay, so the Prim Stitchery you can pick up. There's also a subscription. So if you wanted to you know, get the subscription, they would be mailed to you every month. Um, I think it's digital that way. I'm not, I'm not positive, but you can buy just the ones that you like. The little bird is so precious, the little brown bird. I just love it. Okay, we have, I have a, a, a little, like a couple people have written recently about losing their mojo, losing their sewing Joe. <laughs> they don't have any desire to sew is what they're saying. Like they have been sewing and then all of a sudden they're just like, I, you know, they don't, they aren't sewing. And so they've been asking, you know, how do you deal with that? How do you deal with that? So on our Facebook group, the friends there have been, you know, giving suggestions. And one of the things I always want to encourage anybody that's kind of gotten in that spot because everybody gets there for one reason or another. I've been there. Um, I've been there recently with all of this, with breaking my wrists, um, you know, where I, I couldn't physically sew. Even if I'd wanted to, I don't think I could have. I just was, you know, wasn't there. Um, but I've had it over time, you know, it, it comes every so often. So here is what I suggest. This is my suggestion. Because sometimes I feel like when we've hit that wall, we actually have to make ourselves do the thing we don't want to do. Uh, and then it, if it's gonna come back, it kind of eventually comes back just by the process of you actually doing it. You may not feel like doing it, so what I suggest is set your timer. Here, get your timer, set it for 10 minutes so that you do at least 10 minutes of sewing. Just force yourself, even if you don't feel like it, move some fabric around. Find some, you know, squares and just make an, make an Oh My Stars, which is super easy. It's mostly squares. Um, do something very simple, but do it every day, every single day. Make yourself do those at least 10 minutes. You can do more, but if you can do 10 minutes, even if it's just sorting your fabric, and then eventually over time, if you commit to this for doing it for several weeks, just getting yourself in there, uh, something will eventually click if it's going to. Some people find other ways to do it, but I kind of like this way. Um, so I, that's what's worked with me when I just know that uh, I have to 
have to sort of force it sometimes. You just kind of get over that issue of uh, whatever blockage you have. Um, it's very, once you make your mind stop focusing on your other issues in life, if you go into your sewing and you let your mind just deal with sewing, just deal with quilting and not think about other things, it frees, uh, frees it up. <clears throat> it lets it sort of shut down the negative part and open up the positive part. <clears throat> so give it a try. Uh, let me know if it works. If you have other things that you do, uh, put them in the comments, put them over in the Facebook group, uh, you know, share because people need help. So I think we can help them. We can all be supportive. Um, okay. Coming up, September 8th is the Jelly Roll, the Jelly Snowflake. So be sure you have uh, the pattern downloaded. It's linked below. Be sure that you have a jelly roll. These are two and a half inch strips. <clears throat> you can make your own or you can buy one, but that's coming up on September 8th. And we'll do the same series. And my friend Sue cut out the pink that I'm using for the background for this. I'll open that up in another video here soon and show you uh, what's going on. Okay, last question from my friend Lisa in our, in our Quilt Along group. She sent five questions, so this is the last one, uh, which I thought was kind of funny. I had to leave it till last because I had to think about this. <clears throat> it's not really a topic, I, it's not something I think about very often. She wanted to know if I have any pet peeves. It's like, well, I think everybody has those. Um, you know, it's what we whine about, right? What do you whine about? I mean, I'm like thinking, do you really want to know what I whine about? <laughs> That's not a very positive, fun topic, but I thought, okay, um, you know, pet peeves are things people you might do that you don't like, you know, it's all, it's not a very, you know, it's, but one thing that, that, that for me that, um, you know, I wouldn't say it's like, I like direction. Okay. So I'll do a sewing one and a not sewing one. So for directional fabric, like, let's say you have a scenery. Like for me, I don't know if I call it a pet peeve or just something that bugs me, but like if there's scenery and it has a definite direction, you know, like the trees, you know, there's trees and houses. I don't like it if they're sideways. I just can't do it. I can't do it on purpose. If it, even if it happens accidentally, I might have to take it out, you know, something really like figural like that where I can really tell the direction. Even like less obvious fabrics, I have to fix them. And then the other thing is I don't like the wait in line. So, you know, it's just something I do not like to do. I'm not good with waiting in line. Although phones, uh, our, our phones now have helped because I can go on the phone and look at it, but I just, I just have a hard time with lines. I'm, I'm not good with that. <laughs> All right. Be working on your scrappy stars. Mine is turning lovely. Look at it, zing zing. I have got all these little piles for the rest of the red and white nine patches. And then I have to do a, another set of piles for the rest of the blue and white nine patches because it's the 25th and I have got to get that top done by the 31st. That is my personal goal. All right, I love you. Thank you for being here. Thank you for using my links. I will see you friend online. Mwah, mwah. I love you.